And we, there's one thing that God can't do without a hilarious prompt to do giver. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You know, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He's the one that started the giving. And so as he is a giver, and we, Christ is in us, we are givers. And when you know a brother and sister in Christ, they're going to be givers. People that are stingy, mingy, come on. <laughs> They're not in Christ. That's you know, right. Even That's the it. sons of God are led by the Spirit of God. That's and we want to be led by the Spirit of God in everything that we do, everything that we're we're directing toward the Father, because yes. there's always going to be a harvest. Yes. And we want that harvest. We want the harvest. You know, that harvest that Jesus, he came into the earth. Think of it, the harvest of the disciples, the harvest of you and I are a part of that, of that seed that Adam and Eve, the seed of conception by the Holy Spirit that impregnated Mary. Think about it. Mary was just so young. She was like, she wasn't even like 13. You know what I'm saying? She was just so young. And here she's carrying the Messiah, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And an angel comes and appears to her. And so she was prompt to do, and she was a hilarious giver. Because when she went to go see Elizabeth, right? It said the babe leaped in her room. <laughs> <laughs> so it says the word yeah. leaping and praising the Lord. Leaping and praising. <laughs> so in 2 Corinthians, if you turn with me, we're going to start on chapter 9. And that is the scripture. I got this beautiful new Bible I'm breaking in. Um, I'm so excited. It's an amplified study Bible, so it's a little different than the King James. But I love to read all the different, inter you know, the different translations because it really brings it home. And you can really hear what the Spirit of God is wanting to get to you about that scripture. So we're in verse, chapter 9, verse 6. It says, now remember this, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows generously, say generously, generously, that blessing may come to others, will also reap generously, say generously, generously. and be what? Blessed. <laughs> Let each one give thoughtfully and with purpose, such as he has decided in his heart. So it's a heartfelt condition. You know, to sow and to be a lover and a giver, it's a heart condition. And so God's continually working on the inside of our heart. But he cannot do, and here it comes, just as he has decided in his heart, that's you and I, not grudgingly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver and delights in the one whose heart is in his giving. Amen. And that is so powerful. You know, when you have to give out of a grateful heart, out of a yes. heart of gratitude, because everything that you have comes from the Father of yes. Life, where there is no variableness or shadow of turning. Yes. Every good and pure and perfect gift comes down. And so just know that everything that you're ever going to have is going to come from Him. And so we are His children, and He knows best. He knows what we have need of before we even ask, what we have to continue to ask Him. Because that's what the Word says. Ask, and you shall receive. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and the door shall be opened. So there's just something about seeking Him and knocking and asking and opening up those doors, opening up those doors of favor, opening up those doors of harvest. And an expectation that it's coming back to you, good measure, pressed down, shaking together, and running over. Men shall give unto your bosom, because you know he doesn't have he doesn't have money trees that are just going to rain down from heaven. Right. You know we have needs, we have great needs, we have things that only God can do. Yes. So it's not a, he doesn't have the money in heaven that he's going to rain down. It's all right here. It's all right here. We're in this realm, and so when we come in line with this word, we're going to come in line with this blessings. When we come in line with seed time and giving, it's going to produce. You know, the seed makes the ground produce. And so you see out here on this tree farm, the seed makes the ground produce a harvest. That's right. And as you water it today, and you're giving, mm -hmm. and if you're sowing, I'm just going to read the next one. It says, and God is able, able. say able, able. 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 to He's make able. all He's grace, able. every favor, say favor, say favor's coming to my business, favor's coming to my marriage, favor's coming to my apartment looking. <laughs> Because God 
God says it, not us. God says it. He is able. When we are weak, he is strong. There's a strength that comes into you when you come in line with the word of God because the word is working on your behalf. He says that as we ask, we shall receive, and then the word will accomplish that which it's said to do. That's what it does. It's like an arrow. You know, have you ever done the target and you just shh? And it's going to go and it's going to bring whatever it is that you have need of because God is able. able. He's not just able, he's willing to make all grace, every favor and earthly yes. blessing. These are earthly blessings that we need to come to our business. These are earthly blessings that we yes. need. So we call it forth in the name of Jesus. There's yes. power in the blood. And you are covenant children. Am I talking to covenant children yes, today? Yes, yes, that we have a covenant with our Heavenly Father and we're enforcing that covenant. So we have covenant rights. So we're speaking it forth in the name of Jesus. And we're being a doer of the word, not just a hearer only. There's many people that go to church that are not going to heaven. Because there's many parts of the Bible that you have to have repentance. You've got to be preaching repentance. You've got to be preaching the full counsel of the Lord. And when you don't have the full counsel, you know, some are called, some are sent, some just took a mic and went. So many can just be out there. But I'm telling you, there's two kingdoms, and we've got to get with the kingdom of heaven. Amen. And we're building the kingdom of heaven. We're not building man's kingdom. We're building the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Am I looking at Preacher some kingdom Christ. builders? <laughs> Hallelujah. And it says, so that you, say me, may always, under all circumstances, regardless of the need. How many of you have a need? Raise your hand. We all. We all. We have a need for the Father, we have a need for so many things to come in line with His Word for us, you know, because we're not we're we're not perfect, and we have to continue to to you know you know trust in Him and believe in Him and, and allow our faith to work for us. Maybe you're not making the connection in your faith, but today is a new day. You know, all things have become new. So whatever it is that you're believing, you're praying, you're standing on, I believe that the Spirit of God is going to connect you with it. As you are a sower, as you are a doer, and as you are a believer, and trusting and standing on that word. Standing on that word. Get a scripture so you can stand on that word. Believe in him and trust in him for that which you have need of. Amen. And it says that have complete sufficiency in everything, being completely self-sufficient in him. Say self-sufficient in him. Not in you. You can't do it. If you could do it, you would have already done it. But it's in him that we have the sufficiency. It's going to come in him. We're seated in Christ in him. It's not I that lives, but it's Christ that lives within me. So allow the Christ to live big in you. Big God and little bitty devil. Amen. He's a big, big God. And have an abundance for every good work, act of charity. As it is written and forever remains written. And sometimes you just need to remind the devil, it is written. It is written. It is written. And when it is written, it's forever settled in heaven and earth. What we bind on earth is bound in heaven. So just close your eyes. Father, I just thank you, Father, for every person in this place. I thank you, Father, for favor. I thank you, Father, for a call to do hilarious giver. And I thank you, Lord, that it shall come back to them, good measure, pressed down, shaking together. Because you said, whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he reapeth. And I thank you, Father, that I am looking and talking to reapers today. Supernatural, supernatural, supernatural finances coming into their account. Supernatural favor on the job. Supernatural that the ministry angels are going to bring the money in, that the supernatural, that natural and the super coming together to create an expectancy in them. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
See that those those, those scriptures, you know, what happened to those, those scriptures? scriptures uh, uh, that Rhonda was, was 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 quoting there. Uh, there was a season in our life where life was was no stranger, and uh, <laughs> and when we uh, first first got married, we you know we were we were both uh, uh, and we were both tithers. And we both in our own right, you know, we had, you know, we prospered in our own right. But when we came together and got married, uh, Pastor Joe got pregnant right away. And uh, and so what happened was all of a sudden I wanted her to quit her job and want to keep working, you know. And she had a very good job and she earned a considerable salary. And uh, But I didn't want her to work, you know, when she was pregnant. And uh, that was a little jealous to me. Because she, these guys would call her at seven o'clock in the morning, talking about what they were going to do that day. You know, and I thought, I don't want some guy calling my wife at seven o'clock in the morning to go over the day's, you know, work and so forth. And you know, here my wife's pregnant, and I don't want her to work. And so, long and short of it was, I just felt like, and, and that so she works for God now. She works. She, she's always she's always been a worker, but she works for God. But uh, anyway, I just you know, but. But so so we we did, made the decision that she was going to um, quit her job, and uh, so she did. And uh, the company that she worked for was a, was a wonderful company, and uh, they had given her company car. So the first thing we had to do we had to go buy another car, you know, because we, we we you know we needed another car. And uh, she, when we got married, she had her home and I had my home, and uh, we didn't need to. We were going to live in one home, you know, so. So here we're paying for two homes, and you know we got one salary. We're paying for two homes, and we're paying for two cars. Where you know we, we were, we're so it was just a whole lot of things, you know, and, and there was a real stress on the finances, you know, and but we were fully committed and fully persuaded that God was able to to meet us, you know, in the in the way of our finances, that, that He was able to meet us and He was able to sustain us and provide what we need. What we need, so you know, we began to, to really seek the word concerning that, really seek him concerning that. And those particular scriptures in Second Corinthians 8 and 9 were, uh, were became so precious to us, you know, they were so uh, they became our, our guiding uh, 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 forces because we knew that, that it was the word of God that was going to deliver us, you know. And uh, because in, in our, uh, you know, in, in my business, my business had changed over the years. And it had just become a more difficult business than it ever was. And, uh, I, and I still made good money, but we, didn't, we weren't seeing the enormous growth that we'd seen before. You know, we weren't seeing those kinds of things. And more importantly, we were seeing enormous growth in our expenditures, you know. <laughs> and, uh, but we weren't seeing enormous growth in our and so we really, we, we, we realized, you know, God was, God had brought us together. You know, we knew that God had called us to be married. And so, you know, he was certainly calling us concerning finances as well. And those particular scriptures, we, we began to, uh, uh, to really study those scriptures, as well as the other scriptures, and to begin to, to believe God. And there were just different things that God so quickened to us, because, see, the, the, uh, uh, and and, and I'll, I'll, I'll just mention this. Let's, let's mention. Let me go back and mention this, and then we'll come back to that subject. When you got born again, when you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that wasn't the moment He knew you. He knew you from before the foundation of the earth. He knew you. You were you were in the heart and mind of Christ. You were in the heart and mind of God before you ever left heaven. Existed in the mind, heart, and mind of Christ. We pre-existed the earth uh, before, long before we ever came here. And what what you don't hear preached is that God began to watch over you before you ever accepted Him. You know, long before I ever accepted Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, He was already giving me the benefits of the covenant. Because he knew that I would accept him. He knew that I was going to choose 
to serve him, and he began to give me the benefits of in advance. Not fully, not completely, you know, all the benefits, but he did begin to give us the benefits of, of covenant in, uh, in, in advance. And so, you know, throughout really the majority of my, my business life, I had been a, a, a prosperous man. I remember this friend of mine told me that, he, you know, he was in the same business as I was, and he got steamrolled in uh, uh, the, the Great Recession of 2008, 9, 10. He got steamrolled probably worse than we did, you know. And, uh, and he said, but, he, but remember, he made an interesting comment. He said, you know, he said, we don't know how to be broke. We don't know how to be poor. He said, I've been a prosperous man my whole life, and I don't know how to be broke. You know, and he said, So I, I can't be broke. I can't be the Indian. It was an interesting uh, comment because God had done that with us as well. I mean, God had, had made us prosperous people all, all, all of our lives. And so when you had those ups and downs, um, the difference was that uh, we needed more supernatural help, you know, as we came into uh, the, the, the later days. But we began to study the word. And what happened was that as God began to instruct us, one of the things, we were already tithers when, before we got married, but the Lord reinforced and, you know, and stressed the tithe and talked about the importance of the tithe. And what happened was that what we would begin to do was we would begin, if we needed an increase in our finances, we began to increase our tithe. We increased our tithe before we increased our income. And believe in God that God, if we're tithing a, a larger amount, you're going to meet us with a larger income. And invariably, it happened just in very short order. That's what happened. You know, we would increase our, our, our tithe by hundred dollars a week or something like that. And sure enough, you know, it wasn't very long. And and, and you know, that would be our our actual time when uh, when it came. And uh, the Lord began to deal with us about sowing. You know, because we were already tithers, so we were already tithing. But He began to deal with us about sewing. And the place where we went to church was a, was a wonderful, wonderful place. And uh, they had a, uh, it was really a missionary-based church. And they had uh, missionaries in the field that they supported, hundreds, literally hundreds and hundreds of missionaries out in the field that they supported. <clears throat> and it was a large, a very large church with a large revenue stream and so forth. But they would have, throughout the year, they would have the missionaries would come in, you know, and uh, spend time, and then go back out, and they would have missionary conferences and so forth. So they were continually taking uh, offerings for the, the the ministry and for the, the different missionaries and so forth. And uh, and and the Lord really uh, equipment to us that we needed to begin to sow into the work of God. You know, that if we wanted God to sow into our work. And to our businesses, we were going to have to sow into his work, that that was the way that it would work. And so we did. We began sowing. And, and yeah, quite frankly, we didn't have a lot to sow. So, so our sowing was, was fairly uh, uh, minor. But um, the Lord really began to equipment to us in our prayer time and in our, our study time. The Lord began to equipment to us, you know, listen, if you want me to do more for you, you have to do more for me, you know. And, uh, uh, because that's the way it works. And see, the the principle of seed time and harvest, the seed precedes the harvest. And it's you that's responsible for the seed. I mean, you're the one who's responsible to sow the seed. And if you don't sow the seed, you don't get the harvest. It's see, really that, it's kind of that simple. That process worked exactly like that, that you, you sow first. And so what happened was we purposed in our heart that we were going to begin to increase our sowing to uh, not our tithe. I mean, we, we were already had our tithe. But we were going to increase our sowing to uh, the different situations and circumstances that would happen. And I remember the, uh, uh, you know, we would usually give, you know, when, the, when the, they take up an offering for a particular missionary or something, we'd give them 50 bucks or whatever it happened to be. And, you know, the Lord would speak to us about increasing the amount that we would give, you know, to 250, you know, let's, let's step this up a little bit, you know. And, and then, lo and behold, there came something that was seemed really important, you know, and, 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 the, and the Lord quickly would give them a thousand, you know, give them a thousand dollars. 
And uh, then uh, I remember one in particular was there were several situations that happened that were truly life-changing in our finances. And one of them was, um, it was in Brazil. There was a, um, something was happening in Brazil. I don't even remember exactly what it was. But it was a big deal, and they were taken up, they had really concentrated, they said, okay, now this, this mission, this mission here, we, we get behind them as a church, and we, we've got something we want to do for them that's different from the other people, it's, it's more, you know, we'd really like you to, to uh, give substantially, huh? Participate. Yeah, participate in this, and the Lord quickened us, we were supposed to give them $5,000. We'd never give them. A five thousand dollar offering anytime, anywhere, you know. But uh, but the Lord quickly to us to that particular Brazil ministry offering five thousand yes, dollars. And uh, so we had a little bit of time to kind of get, get ready and get prepared. And lo and behold, when the time came, we did, you know. And what happened was God began to develop us through this sowing process. You know, we we'd start with a little bit here, and, you know, a little bit there, and then it would grow and it would grow. And what we discovered was there was a pattern, you know, and the pattern was God was stretching us. From, yes. From, and he was stretching us beyond what we could believe for, to believe for something right. higher, you know. And uh, it was particularly in the context of a lot of those different missionary situations that we just increased our sowing and increased our sowing, and he would increase our provision, and he would increase our, our income and increase our our finances, and we were never sure. We were never sure. You know, we just uh, we, we, we were able to do uh, whatever. And and in every case, it, it became like, a, you know, I want you to do this. And and, and, and so our, our sewing would grow in amounts, and our income would grow in amounts. And, and eventually, um, they, they began to take some real gigantic leaps, you know. And he began to supernaturally meet us in our finances, and we would see things happen supernaturally. And uh, he, he spoke to us uh, concerning the building of our home. And uh, at, the, at the particular time, we needed a, a bigger house. Our, our children were, you know, we were having more children, and we just needed more space. And we needed to have, uh, uh, we just, we, we, we decided we were going to build a, a home. So we had, had bought this property. And uh, we decided that we were going to build it home. And of course, we didn't have money. So the deal was, we were going to, what we were going to do was we had a real estate transaction that was going to happen. We were going to get some money out of it. And that was going to be our down payment. And we were going to borrow the rest of the money for the, the house. And we were going to build the house. And, uh, and so as we're working toward that, the Lord said, well, look, he said, I want you to take that money that you're going to, that you're going to get. And I don't want you to use it for the down payment on the house. I want you to give it to the church for the building fund, you know. And it was a substantial amount of money. I thought, God, you know. I mean, this is ridiculous, you know. I mean, we need a new house and so forth. And you're asking us to sow the building fund for the church. And uh, and we said, God, I've got to know, you know, that, that if, you, if, if, if this is what you say we're supposed to do, then okay, we'll do it. But I've got to know that. That was you. I've got to know. It was, it was, you know, I've got to know it was your word. And uh, just a series of things happened. The prophet was there. That day. There's a prophet that came. Who, uh, and, and again, I'm not big on, on prophecy, but there was a prophet that came one day, and he began to prophesy that there was somebody in the church that was going to uh, give uh, uh, exactly what the Lord had told us to give. He yeah. prophesied there was somebody in the church going to do that. And that was one thing, and then there was another a similar situation happened. I went to uh, what did they call it? The men? What do they call those men's things? Uh, men's encounter. Huh? Men's encounter. The men's meetings. No, remember they used to. Oh, promise. Yeah, promise keepers. Oh, that's what. It was. So I went. Oh. I went to this promise keepers meeting, and I wasn't all that wild about going to the promise keepers, frankly, you know. And uh, but what had happened is I committed to work in the. As an usher in the, in the thing's form, you know, I know I gotta go anyway, you know. And uh, but something happened at that meeting, and the Lord really spoke to me about it. The Lord said, This is me, you know, and uh, I just said, you know, I want you to know this is me. And uh, so, anyway, the long and the short of it is, 
that we ended up, that's what we did. And so we ended up building our house. And money began to come in from the most unusual of places, you know. Yes. And and today, you know, the amount of money that came in, we ended up paying for the whole house. We never had to borrow any money. And never had to have a money. We ended up paying for the whole house. And it, it, even today, there's no way I could look back and say that much money came in over that period of time that I was able to take and build the house. And, you know, how, how could that be? You know, how, 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 how could it happen? Uh, I don't know. You know, it was it was so supernatural, so incredibly supernatural. But the point was, God began to to stretch us, and He began to grow us, and He began to grow us, and He began to grow us. And as we grow in our sowing, we grew in our revenue and in, in our financing, and even in uh, like the uh, pandemic came to work for us. You know, we uh, we we knew we needed help because our you know the children were small. And, Help. We just we couldn't afford to, to hire somebody, but when Debbie came along, we thought, well, you know, we interviewed her, we, we heard the word of the Lord that this is the person, this is the person you're supposed to hire, and uh, we didn't have the money, but I thought, you know, we'll give us the go ahead and hire her, and we'll, you know, as long as we can write the check, you know, we're going to write the check, and you know, she was she was with us for almost 25 years, yeah. and we never missed a paycheck of hers, you know. And, in 25 years. And because uh, as we stretched, God stretched our finance. And as, as we committed, we were going to do this and we we're going to do that. And I want you to, 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 to notice the pattern there, though. God's waiting for you to yes. do something. You know, He's not going to do it. For, he's, he's already done everything Amen. that He's going to do. You know? and, and in the arena, I, I personally think that in the arena of the time, he, you know, he's going to provide for your needs. He's going to do that. But life is about more than needs. Life is about more than having needs. We have desires. Yes. You know, we have things yes. that we, we, we yeah. want. I remember that we had we were having a party one time. We had invited these people to come to the, to the party, and uh, one of the people there over there said, "You know, I just, you know, I, I, I'm not carnal. I don't have any carnal desires." <laughs> and I said, "Why?" <laughs> I said. I got a lot of carnals, and I got a lot of carnal things I want. You know? yeah. And uh, you know, I want to, I want to do the things God wants me to do, and do all those things too. But hey, I've got carnal desires too. You know, and I'm not ashamed of that. I don't yeah. think there's anything that's ungodly about that. You know, yeah. God, it's just, God doesn't want yeah. those things to have you. You know, right. and you can have things, yes. just that the things don't have you, and that when He speaks to you to do something. That you don't say, well, you know, I've got to look at my stuff over here. I do this, and that isn't the way it works. You know, and you, you, you got to, you know, be willing Amen. that if he speaks to you to do something, you do it. You know, Amen. and God developed us in, in those things. And, uh, you know, we've, we've had, certainly had our ups and downs in, in, that, in, in our finances, but God has been faithful and God has sustained us. But in, in every case, it was, you got to do something. You got to stretch first. You got to move towards me. It was a reason. It was, it was such a big. It, you know, it was just. It was just such a big deal. And you know that that scripture. You know, he loves. He prizes above other things, and he's unwilling to do without the cheerful, joyous prompt to do it here. See, those are your criteria: cheerful, joyous. Prompt to do it, giver, whose heart is in his giving. The, the reason they talk about your heart being in your giving is because you want your heart to be with him. Did you you want to be with him? You want to be going where he's going. Where where is he going? And, and it may be just be your, your money that, that goes, you know. But uh, we have been in the in the I think we I don't think that we've ever sowed to somebody who's going into Antarctica. But with that yeah. exception, the other six continents of the earth, you know, we've sown to somebody doing mission work in those in those continents, in those uh, those continents somewhere. And you know, I used to be just absolutely amazed that that you know you know I, when we would see the places where our seed went, you know, was so astonishing the number of places where our seed went. 
it was a glorious, glorious thing, you know? And, uh, but it's a privilege, but to be a joyous, cheerful, oh, whose heart, who, heart is this giving, that's who I want to be. You know, that's who, that's who I purposed in my heart to be. That's who we purposed in our heart to be. That's who God wanted us to be. And God has a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. And there have been times where, you know, we, we had this farm one time, and uh, we decided, I didn't know anything about farming, you know, I, mean, I just, I knew nothing about farming, and uh, so, you know, that's kind of the recipe for disaster, but we, we felt clearly we were supposed to do it, you know, so what we did was we sat down and said, well, what, what can we do, how can we, you know, how, how can we get, if I got God involved in my farm, right. My heart's going to prosper because anything yes. God touches is yes. going to prosper, you know. Yes. And so we 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 said, and we said, what what can we do? How can we get God involved in in this farm? Yes. So what we decided to do was that for every dollar that we sowed into the ground, every dollar of seed we sowed into the ground, we were going to match that dollar with a dollar into the the kingdom of God, and that's yes. what we did. Every dollar that we sowed into the ground, we yes. matched it. In, yes. into God. And God so supernaturally prospered that farm beyond belief. You know, we we ended up selling the crops of that farm and it sustains. We lived off the sale of the crops of that farm for three years. It, it took care of all of our needs for, for, for three years. And it was just such a, a, a such an extraordinary thing. But the idea was we wanted to distinguish ourselves. And we would uh, have our people, they would spend a certain amount of time praying over the property, you know, on a, right. on, on a regular basis. You know, but because what I wanted was that if God's looking for somebody to do something for, his eyes is going to settle there. You know, I mean, these are people that love me. These are people that are with me. These are the people that want to do things for me. And so, I, you know, I want to bless them. I want to make sure that they have enough. If their heart is to serve towards me, I want to make sure they got enough to sell. And that's, I think that's the way God looks at it. In fact, I know that's the way God looks at it. That you know, if your heart is towards him, he's going to see to it that you have the, the revenue. And just like, you know, the, the, to, you know, we're going to build a new building. I haven't given not two seconds thought to how we're going to pay for that building. You know, because God is going to make the money available. It's just, it's that simple. You know, he's going to make it. When we need it. Hallelujah. So we don't have to worry about that. Anyway, I just, I, you know, I encourage you. And, uh, uh, what, a, uh, what a powerful thing. Let's look. Let's start with. Uh, let me go back to Matthew. I've been traveling off for a while here. You know, Pastor um, Ronnie was talking about how the. Uh, The baby left in in in, uh, in Mary's womb, you know, when she meets Elizabeth, and uh, when she meets Elizabeth, the baby leaps, and and, uh, uh, and and there's a there's a joy, you know, leap. It said it said that the baby leaped for joy, and uh, you know, I, I noticed when you know when Hannah had the baby the other night, I was holding the baby for, for the first time, and, and you know, the thought that occurs to me. And it's happened with every one of our children, with uh, you know, with, with, with every single every, every single one of our children, that um, God came like that as a baby, you know, and He trusted people. Yeah. There was a young girl who was just a young girl, you know, and there was a Joseph, you know, the the, the man, and God came in that. So helpless, form, so totally, completely dependent upon a human being, you know, and uh, that he he gave of himself. He trusted that component of himself to um, to human beings. You know, what an extraordinary thing. You know, that, that is what a what a powerful power. And that he's continued to allow us to raise little ones, you know, and, and that sort of thing.
but that he entrusted himself. That was such a powerful, awesome, awesome thing. Maybe it didn't bless you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let me see. Where do I, where do I want to go? I am not. Oh, hallelujah. Let's go to Mark. In the interest of time, let's go to Mark. Uh, we're going to go to Mark chapter 8. Because here's what I think. There's something in here that we want to see. Now, we know that there are different miracles. Jesus did different miracles. And uh, most people have heard of it, that you can spend any time listening to, to uh, you know, people ministering. Uh, you know, people talk about the miracles, the, the different miracles that, uh, that uh, uh, Jesus did, particularly the miracles that Jesus did. And, uh, and, and I'll say this, we're, 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 uh, we're going to go to Mark chapter 8, verse 1. And this is the story of the feeding of the 4,000. Now, there was a story we, we talked on Wednesday night. We talked about the story of the feeding of the 5,000. And uh, it was a, a mighty miracle that Jesus did, a, a miracle of the feeding of the 5,000. There are other miracles uh, as well. There was the, uh, 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 actually we talked on Wednesday night, we talked about the miracle of the, the nets full of fish, or where, where uh, uh, Jesus comes to uh, use Peter and John's boat, you know, and he, he teaches, and we've all heard it, heard it taught, you know, that, that, you know, Jesus, you know, by this gigantic load of fish, that Jesus is reimbursing Peter for this, for the use of his boat, you know, and I, there's probably some truth in that, but it's it's such a short-sighted view of what actually happened there, you know, because what actually happened there was that Jesus Jesus didn't just happen by these guys, you know, who had a boat and happened by a group and he's going to teach. He was looking for Peter. See, Peter was predestinated to be who Peter was going to be. Similarly with James and John, they were predestinated to be who they were going to be. So Jesus didn't just wander by the shore, and there didn't just happen to be a boat there, and there didn't just happen to be, you know, uh, somebody he could, he could get out. He was looking for Peter, and he was looking for James and John, because he had an assignment for them. He had something for, for them to do. And so he speaks to them, and they... The, you know, he, he speaks to Peter and he says, let's, let's put puts out a little bit so I can speak to the people. And uh, so that's what he does. And then afterward, he says, now go, sit, you know, put out your net, put out your nets for a catch. And uh, lo and behold, they have a, 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 a gigantic catch. And to say that Jesus was just reimbursing Peter for the use of his boat is an incredible oversimplification of what has happened. There, you know, because he's clearly trying to show Peter, I'm in charge of provision. You know, right. that, that it's, it's not about reimbursing for the use of his boat. I know where the provision is, I know yes. how to get it to you. See, Peter says, Listen, we fished all night and we caught nothing, meaning there were no fish there because they fished with nets, they weren't, you know, they weren't fishing with hooks, so it wasn't like the fish weren't biting, they just weren't there. See, you know, that's what we, we, we go fishing with a hook, you know, and, 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 and you don't catch anything. Well, they weren't biting today, you know, and maybe, maybe that's true, but they're fishing with nets that were not there. So, somewhere between where Jesus is preaching and Jesus' commandment for them to let out their nets, the fish show up. So Jesus is clearly, he, he knows where the provision is, and he knows how to get the provision to them. And what he's showing them is you don't have to worry about all that other stuff. You don't have to worry about your boat. You don't have to worry about your business. You don't have to worry about those things. I'm the one who's in charge of provision. And see, we forget that. You know, we, we, we lose, the, we lose the, 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 the thought, you know, that he's the one who's responsible for that provision. He's the one 
whose responsibility here. And if you're pursuing, so the message was that if you're involved in my stuff, I'm going to be involved in your stuff. If you're involved in my business, I'm going to be involved in, in your business. One of the things the Lord spoke to me in a dream about years ago was the Lord said, listen, if you work for me, you can have anything you want. You know, Amen. anything Amen. that you, you, you want. And uh, what a powerful thing. I mean, yes. doesn't that, you know, and, and yes. because he knows that if you're committed to him and that you work for him, you're not going to want stupid things. You're not going to want things that are bad for you, you know. Right. But you're going to, the things you're going to want are going to be the things that help you fulfill the goals of your life, which include serving him, which include, you know, honoring him. Anyway, I wanted to look for just a minute at um, Mark chapter 8. Now, in Mark chapter 6, um, verse 34, around verse 34, he talks about this, it's the feeding of the 5,000. And, uh, we, you know, we've studied that. We know what, what, what what's going on there. The disciples are unconvinced that Jesus is going to be able to feed those people, you know. But lo and behold, he does, you know, through a very miraculous intervention. So now, let's go over to this Chapter 8 here. Now, so this. In those days, the multitude being very great and having nothing to eat, Jesus called his disciples unto him and he said to them, I have compassion on the multitude because they've now been with me three days and they have nothing to eat. If I send them away fasting to their own houses, they will faint by the way. For doctors of them came from afar. And the disciples answered and he said, From whence can a man satisfy these men with bread here in the wilderness? In other words, how are we going to feed them in the wilderness? You know, where are we going to get? Where are we going to get the stuff? In the wilderness. And he says to them, how many loaves do you have? And they said seven. And he commands the people to sit down on the ground. He took the seven loaves and he gave it thanks and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples to set before them. And they did set them before the people. And they had a few small fish. And he blessed and commanded them to set them also before them. And so they did eat and they were filled. And they took up of the broken meat, what was left, seven baskets. You remember in the feeding of the, the feeding of the five thousand, they had twelve baskets left over. Here now they're feeding four thousand people, same loaves and fish. They only got seven baskets left over. But the principle is the same. In other words, everybody ate, everybody was satisfied. Yeah. It was enough. And it was a multiplication of the seed that they had. In other words, there was a small seed there. That seed was multiplied sufficiently to feed all of these people. And they that had eaten were about 4,000, and he sent them away. And straightway he entered the ship with his disciples. So, so the, the point of that miracle is it's virtually identical to the feeding of the 5,000. You know, they feed 4,000 and not 5. But in almost every other respect, that miracle is basically an identical miracle. The same. So now, straightway, he entered the ship with his disciples. He came in the parts of where, wherever it was. And the Pharisees came forth and began to question him, seeking a sign from heaven, tempting him. And he sighed deeply in the spirit, and he said, Why does this generation seek a sign? Verily I say unto you, there should be no sign given unto this generation. And he left them, and entering into the ship again, he departed to the other side. Now the disciples had forgot to take bread, neither had they in their ship with them more than one loaf. And he charged them, saying, Take heed, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, and of the leaven of Herod. And they reasoned among themselves, saying, It is because we have no bread. And when Jesus knew it, he said to them, Why reason ye because you have no bread? Perceive ye not, neither understand. Have your heart yet hardened? Having eyes, see ye not? Ears have you not? Do you not remember? When I broke the five loaves among five thousand, how many baskets full did you take up? And they said twelve. And when the seven among the four thousand, how many baskets did you take up there? And they said seven. And he said, How is it that you don't understand? How is it that you don't see? How is it that you don't understand? See, the disciples, they're witnessing miracles. But they're not getting what's going on there. They're not, they're not getting the direction. And here they feed these people. They sow 
a seed of the fish that are available. They feed the people with the fish and the loaves and so forth, and they're able to supernaturally multiply and have left over, have plenty left over. Then they go and they do it again, and the disciples still don't get the picture. They still have to do it. That's what's wrong with the church. That's why the church is broke. That's why the church doesn't have any money. The truth about the church in America is they are broke. Every one of them, is, or, or, or most of the people in the church are broke. But they didn't ever get the message. The message was there. The message was clear. If you sow, you reap. You can believe for the supernatural and see God break in the supernatural. But you've got to sow something to God to work with. Yes. And if you don't give him anything to work with, you've got nothing coming back. See, seed time and harvest, but that's the way the process works. You sow and you reap. If you don't sow, you don't reap. That's the most fundamental principle. Amen. The most fundamental Amen. principle of all sowing and reaping. If you don't sow, you don't reap. And depending upon what you sow, if you sow generously, you're going to reap generously. That's the scripture. Right? You sow generously, you reap generously. You sow sparingly, you reap sparingly. That's what's wrong with the church. They sow sparingly. If at all. If at all. I mean, there's a lot of people in the church that are tithers who don't sow seed in addition to their tithe. Right. They're, they're convinced of the tithe that God meets their need. But, you know, when, uh, when I first got born again, I met this guy. I'd gone to high school with a guy. Nice guy. And he's an architect. And uh, he, went to the, he went to this church and I started going to this little charismatic. And the guy was, uh, I mean, I, 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 I felt like the guy just really knew how to hear from God. Right? So I said to him, I said, listen, I want you to, you know, I'd mean, I, I like you to teach me the things of God. You know, I want you to disciple me. I want you to teach me about these, these charismatic things, you know. And the guy said, okay, I'll do that. He said, I know you're a CPA. He said, I want you to teach me about finances. He said, so we'll make a deal. You teach me about finances, and I'll teach you about you know, the, the things of God. So we do, we kind of get off and, and, and we get going. So so he says, so the first time we're going to talk about his finances, he said, uh, he, he brought his tax papers, you know, and that sort of thing. And he said, uh, he said, you know, he's not a tithe. And now he was a tithe, but he wasn't so. He said, he said, you know, I'm a tithe. And he said, I, I earned my income. My wife earns her income. They didn't have any children, so we, we we both have jobs there on our income, and we tithe. He said, I've never seen the abundance that God promised. You know, he said, and I, he said, I feel like that I've been let down because I've been a tither, I've been a, 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 a sower. And, you know, it just, to me, it doesn't look like God's honored his word, you know. So I, I look at all the stuff that he's got, you know, and I said, you know, now, you, 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 you have a, a substantial income, more than most people have, you know. And because uh, now, now listen, I'm barely born again here. Right? I said, you know, you, you can have a substantial income, more than most people have. Your wife has a substantial income. You don't have any debt. You don't have any bills. You don't have any problems. I said, and you're telling me God's not been faithful? You know that God's not showing up. I said, there's something wrong with your thinking. Right. Right. You're right. thinking wrong about this. You, know, you, may, you may not be rich, yeah. but but uh, but you're counting wrong, you know. Yes. And that there's something yeah. desperately yeah. wrong with the, with the way you Because he was blessed. He was blessed. But yes. he, did, he didn't yes. have. He had everything that, they, that the Bible says the time is going to do. He had. Now, he didn't have that because... I will, I, you know, and, and again, I'm going to go out on a limb here. If you're going to see God move for you supernaturally and see the real supernatural stuff, the tithe is not enough. You're going to have to sow on top of that. It's going to have to be seed on top of the tithe. You're going to need to do both. You're going to need to tithe, but you're going to need to sow. Because as you sow, so shall you reap. And you get to decide. He that sows generously is going to reap generously. He that sows sparingly is going to reap sparingly. You get to decide what you're going to reap. You know, you make the decision. 
And uh, anyway, so my, my friend, he just he, he wasn't a seller anyway. You know, we we had uh, this, we went to this church. We, we we went to this church, and the pastor said to me one day. He said uh, he said he said you know I he said I know your CPA. He said I really he said I look for you to look at my finances. He said because I just he said I, I, I'm getting by, you know, and I have. Uh, uh, he said, I, you know, I have a, a good income. I get my bills to pay, but he said, I'm just not seeing it. You know, I, I don't feel freedom in my finances. I don't feel like I'm getting free. Would you look at that? So I look at his, so he brings me all his tax papers and his financial papers and everything. I look at his thing. And, and uh, so he has a, an income. And I look at his tithe as exactly 10% of that income. And, uh, I said, okay, well, how about your seed? Well, I haven't seen So, do you sow more than, you know, if you're, you know, your salary was, because he had a very good salary, you know, for, it was a large church, and for a pastor's salary, he had an excellent, excellent salary, and he tithed exactly 10% of that. And I said, how, how is it that you tithe exactly 10%? He said, well, I tell him in the church to hold out my, my 10%. And then he said, so when they give me my paycheck, they deduct 10%, and they give me my paycheck. And I said, well, that's problem number one right there. You know, I said, you need to get it in your hands so you can present it before God. And you can present it before God and say, God, I'm a time. And I'm trusting your word. And your word said that if I bring the whole time into the storehouse, you know, and prove you now here with, that you'll not open the ones of heaven. You'll pour me out blessings and got room enough to receive, and you'll rebuke the devourer of myself. And said, You need to be saying that out of your mouth. And you need to have it in your hand, and you need to present it before God, and you need to present it in the, the, the offering. Now, I didn't even have much of an understanding of the things of God at that point, but I knew enough to know that, you know, that what was happening is he wasn't even seeing it. It was going, see, what they say in, in what they say about people in our country is that they don't. No, they don't really understand how significant the tax impact is. The income tax impact is because he gets held out of the paycheck. If they had to write a check for it, it'd be a different matter on the other. But because it's held out, they never see it in the first place. They don't, you know, they don't get the impact. Well, it's exactly that was exactly the case with my friend that he's not focused on his tithe. He's not focused on what's happening there. The tithe is making an exchange with God. Amen. And God, I'm going to make an exchange with you here. I'm going to do what you said, but I'm expecting you to do what you said. And you've got to say it, and you've got to believe it. It's got to be like that. The second thing was, anyway, so as we, we work a little further with the stuff there, and I mean, it's got exactly 10%. So I want to see. What do you do? No. You don't have any seat. And the guy sowed 10% of his income. I mean, to the penny. You know, I mean, he was meticulous. He, it went to the penny. But there was not another nickel over and above that. And that's, um, you know, I mean, you, you, you're making a decision here. You know, you're deciding that there's no seed. And what about this? And what about that? What about that? What about this situation? Oh, the church does all that. I said, well, the church has been blessed. But how about you, you know? I mean, do you just want the church to be blessed or do you want you to be blessed? Because the church is sowing into this and the church is sowing into that yes. and the church is yeah. sowing into the and you're encouraging the people to sow, but you're not sowing anything in there, you know? So I'm, I'm just, folks, I'm, 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 I'm giving it how it really works. Yes. Because... <laughs> You know, a lot of people say, well, I don't think it really works that way. Well, you can think whatever you want. I'm telling you how it really works. How it really works is there is, there's a function of the tithe and there's a function of sowing and reaping. And it was God's introduced method. It was the method that God introduced and God ordained and God blessed and said, this is how it's going to work. And if you'll do what I say, I'll do what I say. But if you don't do what I say, you know, you, you didn't believe me. That's what, 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 what really is happening is they don't 
believe God. See, you really didn't believe God. What God wants more than anything else is to be believed. He wants his people to believe him. I mean, there was a word. He sent his word. He sent his son who was the word. Oh, hallelujah. I mean, it's, it's, listen, he, he sent the word that we would believe the word. Oh, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. So my, 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 my friend, the pastor, you know, I mean, hey, he had a nice house. He had a nice, you know, he had a nice house. He had nice cars. His, you know, his bills were paid, you know. One day his wife runs off and leaves him, you know. His kids fall apart, you know. And uh, his kids are wayward. And, uh, you know, the guy's a pastor. And uh, and how what, what is, how sad what a shame you know, but he wasn't sorry, and he wasn't getting behind the things of God, you know. It was he believed him about the tithe and and you know he he did tithe. But there's two sides to supernatural finances. There's two sides to to your finances of God, and you know, listen, I you know I, you, you guys have heard me say this as far as time you. You can tithe anywhere you want. You don't have to tithe here. God's going to take care. If we never receive a nickel in the offerings, God is going to take care of me. God is going to take care of us. Yeah, because we're sowers and we're tithers, and God's going to take care of us. But you should be tithing somewhere. You should be sowing somewhere. Because that's the route to your promotion. And that's the route to how you're going to see. Uh, that's, that's the route to prosperity. Yeah. Is whether you do it here or whether you do it somewhere else, you should be doing it. And you know, I've, I've heard you know the the evangelistic uh, uh, ministries, the teaching ministries, like Ken Copeland say, you know, uh, and say you know, well, you 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 so where you eat. I think that's true. But the important point to God is sow something, be selling. You know, I mean, if you chose to. Send your time to Ken Copeland, or you chose to send it to the church where you went, or you chose to send it to Jerry Saville or somebody like that. God's going to honor that, you know. I mean, God will honor that. I, I, I think because you know he'll because he's, he's talking about seed and he's talking about the time. So you need to be be doing that. Don't worry so much about you know exactly where it's going as as, as doing it, as making sure that you yes. do it. So I just want to kind of just encourage you. You know, if, if it's about finance, it's about seeing your finances grow. If it's about seeing your finances grow, it's both of those things. It's the time and it's the seed. But the thing about the seed is, the seed is how you identify and you say, God, I want to be with you in this one here. This is something I believe God has for me to do over here. God, I want to, 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 to sow into this. God, I want to sow into that. God, I don't want to participate here. And God sees that and says, well, they got my heart. You know, they, 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 they got my heart. And they're not just throwing their money away. They're sowing it in places where I'd like to have them. Because as, as, as crazy as this may sound, God doesn't have any money. You know, God doesn't deal with money. If there's some, a bill that God wants to have paid, he'll have somebody go pay us. But God doesn't write the check. You know, God doesn't do that. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Brother Kevin. Amen. They say, preach it, Brother Kevin. Anyway, shut up. Here's the thing about miracles. God wants to do miracles for you. God wants to do miracles for every single one. He will do them for you. He just needs to know that you're with him. You know, why would he do a miracle for something that's not with him? You know, somebody really doesn't care, you know, about the things of God. Why would he do a miracle for you? And he won't. I'm sorry. It's just, you know, he won't. And, 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 and the thing about getting God to do a miracle, it's not about a bigger seed. It's not about, uh, uh, you know, giving everything you can get your hands on to God so he'll do a miracle for you. That is what makes him do a miracle. What makes him do a miracle is your heart. It's in the heart. It's, it's a heart after. That's what he's looking for. See, David, you know, David was a man 
who had a heart after God. David gave, and when you when you look through the Bibles, the amounts of money and resources and time and effort that gave David gave to God was staggering. Yes. But when God commented about David, he wasn't commenting about him then. What he said is he had a heart after me. You know, he loves me. It was about the heart. It was all about the heart. But you know where your treasure is. You know, your heart, heart, heart's going to be there also. Well, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You know, when, uh, when I first got the baptism, I don't know why I thought to read this to you today, but I'm going to read it today. When I first received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the, the first day I had the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the, the, uh, uh, it was it was a, it was an awesome experience. It just I mean, it just it was like a lightning bolt had hit this room, you know, and just exploded. And it was absolutely extraordinary. And uh, so the next morning, I get up, you know, and I start praying in, in, in the Holy Ghost. And uh, and I I don't remember exactly the exchange, but I asked the Holy Ghost to to give me a word, you know, something like that. Was the word. And so immediately, these are the first two things that the Lord spoke to me. These, these, two, these two passages were in what God immediately said. The first one is Psalm 31. I'm sorry, Psalm 131, 131. Lord, my heart is not haughty, nor my eyes lofty. Neither do I exercise myself in great matters or things too hot for me. Surely I have behaved and quieted myself as a child that is weaned of his mother. My soul is even as a winged child. But Israel hope in the Lord now, henceforth, and forever. You know, it's basically about humility and submission. That's what it is. It's my heart is not hot. My eyes are not lofty. Right. I'm not looking at big, great things. I'm submitting myself to you. And I'm looking to you. And I'm looking at your word. I was the first one. And the second one was Psalm 133. Behold how good and pleasant it is for brethren to, to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, that went down to the skirts of his garment. As the dew of Hermon, and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessing evermore. If you purpose in your heart to dwell in unity with others, with other believers, with you know, your family, your, your spouse, whatever. If you purpose and and, and, and and to be in unity with God. See, the highest expression of unity is being in unity with God. Amen. To be submitted to the Word. To be submitted to God. To be submitted to what He says. That's unity in its Amen. highest and most yeah. important form. Amen. So to be submitted to that unity is how you get a commanded blessing by the Unity with God, unity Thank with His thoughts, unity with His speech, unity with the things He says. That's how you get the commanded blessing. And it's a different matter to have commanded blessing than it is just a permissible blessing is one thing. I want the commanded blessing. I want, I want God to say, no, no, this would be to the good thing, you know, because I assure you, God does that. You know, you know there's opportunity we're going to give to the good thing. You know, he loves me. He cares about me. Give it to him. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Sweetie, did you have something you wanted? It's <coughs> my, my principal unity well, partner right well, here. <laughs> hallelujah. I want to, you know, a, 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 like some of us know the word a lot. And we've been meditating on the word. And we spend time in the Word, and we've been doing it over a series of years, but not everybody is there, okay? And so um, I felt to give you every, for this, I can't even remember how many years I've been doing this, but it's been probably 15, I, don't, I can't even tell you exactly when, but I, I noticed we started, as we began the ministry, which was over 20 years ago, 
we started to see the seasons of God, that God had us deal in certain, he dealt with us in some seasons. And even for me personally, I saw him having certain areas of scriptures at certain times of the year. And so, um, and, and um, I was reading a book of Kenneth Hagin, and he talked about how he spent uh, several months, every morning he would get to the church, and he would read the Ephesian prayer. And because it was about God giving him his, what God's vision was for him personally, that the eyes of his understanding would be enlightened, that he would know the expect, the hope of his calling, his individual calling. Amen? And so he would reread the Ephesian prayer in, in the book of Ephesians. And I wanted to give these, I printed them out, I've had them for years. Um, but these are the prayers that Paul prayed. And so as you go through the summer, summer's a different time. We kind of, I mean, it's busy every, every month, every season's busy. But over the summer, you kind of can have maybe for you, you might have some time to just kind of sit and reflect a little bit on, in some new areas, okay? This month, is when Pastor Kevin and I first started dating, okay? And so as we approach uh, uh, July 4th, this is our season where we came, God revealed we are to be married. So this is kind of a, this is always a special time of year for us, amen? And But I want to encourage you in this, I'm going to give you, these are the prayers that Paul prayed, and there's, there's, there's uh, four different ones. And, and that you spent some time, and I'm going to give up for you, those that, of you that are both on the internet, since you don't, you're not here to receive these, uh, I'm going to just give them to you in their, their scripture reference. So you can look them up yourself, but highlight them for yourself in the Bible, and then put yourself in and ask the Lord for you personally, because he is ever expanding. He has greater things for each of us, for you, for me. And he wants you, but it's going to come from being with him. Amen. It's going to come from you having time with him so that he can speak to you. And so the first one is Colossians 1, 9, uh, chapter 1. I'm going to give these to you here. Would you mind? Thank you. Thank you. I'll copy this for you. I know a lot of you have. I tell you, there's still, it's still important. We leave. So it's still important to go back to these things. These are about him speaking to you. You want to know the voice of God yourself. You want to know, come, uh, I thought, yeah, uh, you want to know the voice. You want God to confirm these things, when you get a prophetic word, you would have already gotten God given it to you. So you can, it leaps like, like we've been saying this morning, like it leaps in you. That was, oh, that was something God already spoke to me. Like, uh, like uh, Sister Rhonda was saying how when, when Mary came with the baby, it leaped. You want stuff, I tell you sometimes, things are quickened to you, but they need to be quickened to you. You want a word to be quickened. Oh, that's something that God already spoke to me. Ooh, ooh, ooh. You know, I hear with Irene. She's got, oh, God spoke to me about that too. And God spoke to me. You know, because God's constantly speaking to her, but she's quickened. Amen? But he wants you to know the hope of your calling and, and know that he has a plan for you. So one of them is Colossians 1, 9 through 14. The other one is Ephesians, another uh, two in Ephesians, Ephesians 1, 17 through 22. Ephesians 1, 17 through 22. Ephesians 3, 14 through 19. And Ephesians is a really little book. If you've not read it, I, this week, read it, okay? And, and just read, reread. That's what I do. I would just read. I, I've got an amplification I did of Ephesians and Colossians. 
years ago because I just was, as I was doing what Ben Hagen did, I did a, he gave me my own amplification of it because I needed to break it down for myself. That's kind of how he works with me. I have to kind of take scriptures and write them out and, and think about them again. And then the, the fourth one is uh, Philippians 1, 9 through 11. And I'm going to just close with that one today, okay? Let your, our love, Lord, we pray, abound more and more in knowledge today and in all insight, amen, in judgment and discernment, that we may approve that which is excellent and of real value, and that we may be sincere and pure without offense until the day of Christ and being filled with the fruits of righteousness which are by Christ Jesus unto the glory and praise of God. I encourage you, we thank you for being with us, those that are with us, those that are not. Please come, join with us. We've got a lot of things, and we, we, as we join together, we are greater together. Amen. There's, an, there's a corporate anointing, and we just so appreciate you being part of the ministry. Whether you're here or going to listen to this later, we value and covet your prayers. We covet your relationship. Amen. Because God does everything out of relationship. We love you. God bless you. And we look forward to being with you again tomorrow. And I'll be with you for Prayer Vision Monday. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. We love you. God bless.